Okay, all right, all right. Welcome to the show where we are going to tackle pressing issues affecting our society. Today we shine a spotlight on the recent revelation about expiring courses in Uganda universities and the far-reaching consequences they have on education and employment opportunities. Joining me on the panel are esteemed guests who will shed light on this matter. Before introducing them to you, let us first have a national anthem. When we're back, I'll be introducing to you our guests tonight. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much for that uh, national anthem. Now, as I told you, in studios, I have uh, several guests tonight, and you have to be ready to rumble. And I want to start with my guest, Mr. Waiswa Ali. Can you say greetings to our viewers, please? Okay. Good morning, everybody, because this is already good morning. Oh! I am happy to be on this panel mm -hmm. to discuss the issues pertaining to our academic issues in our universities. Welcome. Thank you uh, very much. Senior Remedius, you are welcome tonight thank you very much um ladies and gentlemen watching us and listening to us this evening we welcome you to this special program to look at our institutions of higher learning in uganda and what has befallen them it's a very sad situation we are in today but this is not new. We've been talking about it many times before. You can, as one person said, you cannot stop a pig from eating while a Muruganda uh, Kusankuzwa. It will never eat politely. It will always. That's the way the pig is made. So. This is the problem we are faced with with these, with these invaders from Rwanda who took over our country. And look what they have done to our educational institutions. In any case, let's be ready to hear from all the experts and the advices they give us so that we can find a way we're going to, we shall have to rebuild those institutions. Welcome to this program. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Senior Remedius, our other uh, guest, due to, uh, due to technical problems, uh, is struggling with connection, but our technical team is working tirelessly to see him through, so bear with us. For now, let us go to our 
federal anthem and of course we have Waiswa in studio let us hear or let us hear the Usoga anthem tonight Yes, Mr. Weiss? Hello. We are going to have a Busoga anthem. Somebody singing it or you want me to sing it? No, 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 no. I'm going to play it. I have it in the studios. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you. All right, you are welcome. <laughs> Mr. Waiswa, can you uh, give us a little words in Chisoga about the beautiful anthem? Oh, uh, that beautiful anthem, anthem, nti katonda yetu gemo lideishirago echa usogoyo. Ate ni center ebo ni coach ni center kuanga na ya fufu kwa mwaka globu wa liva na ilo reke victory ili yao gamba obo nanga chila bo cha amani inu katunda chia tuwa ifu ya baso ga mu Uganda ye guys ya la 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 kare ifu ya tumwe wa zaka tuwondo yo loku tuwe chila beji ate tu nga chaba zinga na tu kule mbeda nga Omufuzi, owebi, owebi kalicha, owebi enono, 
Yahoo so ojakuba free okuogera olusoga oluzungu oluganda no oluswayi lebo lyao olulina sogati abantu banji abali mu Uganda baso bolo kuulira okay so uh, ladies and gentlemen our panelists tonight bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to our discussion tonight Alfred Ongwen, the Executive Secretary of Uganda National Students Association, who has been directly impacted by the expiring courses or programs. Ali Waiswa, an expert in higher education and a senior lecturer at Chambogo University, alongside Remedius. Chintu, a seasoned teacher and educational analyst. Together, we aim to uncover the truth behind the situation and explore its ramifications. We are going to start with this video tonight. Listen carefully, properly. After this video, we are coming back with our guests to analyze with the questions, of course, from the host, myself, Paul Chimbugwe. This is the video. Makere University has admitted that due to laxity on its part, a number of the institution's academic programs are not accredited by the National Council of Higher Education. In a message to staff members, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, wrote, On our side, there have been unacceptable delays in the review of some programs by departments, schools and colleges, and occasionally at the Senate level for reaccreditation as required by the law. Over 150 courses at the university are not accredited. Some of them expired as far back as 2016, although the university has continued to enroll, teach and graduate students under these unaccredited degree programs. Nawangwe added, we have not had a system to track the expiry of accreditation of our many academic programs, leading to some programs being overdue for accreditation for up to six years. As of 20th May 2023, some of the universities teaching unaccredited courses include Makere University Business School, Mbarara University of Science and Technology, Chambogo University, Bugema University, Busitema University, Gulu University, Islamic University of Uganda, Kabale University, Kampala International University, Kampala University, Mutesa One Royal University, Ndeje University, Nkumba University, St. Lawrence University, Uganda Christian University, Uganda Matters University, and Victoria University. I'll give an example of Mbara University, specifically the course of medicine and surgery that expired around 2015. So any student who graduated from Bara University doing medicine and surgery from 2015 is not recognized in this country. Last month, Uganda National Students Association alerted their patron, President Yoweri Museveni, and the Minister of Education, Janet Museveni, to the storm that is currently brewing. They are yet to receive a response. Students are wasting a lot of time and energy, and when the documents cannot be recognized internationally, if a course is accredited, it has an expiry date. It should be in the system to show you that this course is going to be, uh, a, a, to be expiring soon. The National Council of Higher Education is mandated by the universities and other tertiary institutions act to accredit programs of study in higher institutions. A course is supposed to be accredited every five years at a cost of 825,000 shillings. But then there are those who enrolled on expired programs started up to the end when the program is still expired. That is really null and void. Then there are those who enrolled on a program that is expired, 
and then was reacquainted when we were still on the program. Those the legal aid, the law can still cover them. However, Professor Eli Katunguka, the chairman of the National Council of Higher Education, exonerates the institution, saying it does not have the manpower to supervise all higher institutions of learning. Katunguka is also the vice chancellor of Chambogo University, which is teaching 74 unaccredited degree programs. The institution they are supervising have become too many, now over 52 universities. So that, that delay may occur. Having said that, five years is too short. Dr. Halima Wakabi Akbar, the vice chancellor of Islamic University of Uganda, blames the COVID-19 pandemic for standing in the way of universities applying for a review of their courses. Because the institutions were closed and the members of staff, it was very difficult for them to come together, do the review and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, because it takes a process. Universities have not had the, the budget for convening workshops, seminars, and consulting stakeholders. So that has caused the delay in the processing of these uh, programs. Professor Venasha Sparia Mureba, a former vice chancellor of Makere University and current vice chancellor of Uganda Technology and Management University. Utamu insists it is laxity on the part of the universities. I looked at the Maki University courses. Uh, when I was there as vice chancellor, we ensured that all programs in Maki University were sent to National Council for accreditation. I've looked at most of the programs accredited then have not been reaccredited re because your first degree is null and void. Then the next degree and the other one will, be, will also be null and void. Bernard Owundo, the president of Uganda Law Society, says there can be legal liability for the universities. They could sue the university for offering courses which are not accredited. And therefore, because I spent four years or three years at the university, you misrepresented to me. Some stakeholders blame the policy of appointing vice chancellors as chairpersons of the National Council for Higher Education. Chambogo University is having almost 70% of its courses not accredited. And their vice chancellor, Professor Katunguka, is the chairperson of National Council for Education. Therefore, you find that he can't take up such issues because his university is directly being affected. Professor Katunguka advises universities and other tertiary institutions to take on what they can handle instead of continuously coming up with new programs which are going to increase their burden. Gillian Nantume. NTV tonight. Thank you very much, NTV. Na ye, e jindu chikusesamu story eno, chiri nga chimuwa bibiri. Ndo za gwebera bido kuogira koye kataha museven. Na ye, muli muwa katunguha, ba na wangwe, ba tuliamule, ba ba, <laughs> ba nang. Chichi choche tulikomo Uganda. Anyway, uh, my first question was supposed to go to <laughs> Mr. Alfred Ongwen, but is still struggling with his connection. So let me jump to our senior lecturer, uh, Waiswa, from your perspective as a lecturer. How does the issue of expired courses or oh, programs affect the reputation of Ugandan universities and the credibility of their graduates? Definitely. Reputation, oh, the, <laughs> we are now put at crossroad. The reputation of a university lies within the products that we produce. But now, if the products that we are producing are, are given uh, information which is uh, expired, you know, it's like drinking a milk which is with expired date. Of course, you are going to get out of diseases from that. Milk or any other food that is expired will bring disease. Now here are the courses that we have been teaching and then are not accredited and therefore expired. 
But now, the other day, I was hearing uh, that we, must, we, we should use a lighter word for the example review that they aren't reviewed. In, as far as I know, because uh, in my department, I teach, I teach in sports science at the University of Chambogo, we've been sitting at a departmental level, I think. Hmm. Uh, since 2015, we sit and say, hey, we, we should review. But then when you review, there is a process. A process after the department has sat, there is a faculty, then after that, there is a senate, and after that, they are supposed to be forwarded. Now, the pro problem is, it's slow, the people are slow. When you, you review at the department level, they are put in the shelves. We, we, we forget about them. Hmm. And we continue to teach. But now when it comes out like this, the reputation of a university is put at crossroad. Of course, our, product, our products are now doubted. Hmm. Huh? Yeah. They are doubted. There is a lot of doubt attached to this. Because we have taught them expired things. It is talking about the curriculum, the syllabus, which must be reviewed after, after the five terms, after the five years. But now, if nine years or ten, even twelve, have gone without review and no accreditation of those courses, definitely a, a university like a Chambogo with almost 40,000 students, mm. you can imagine. And those students are, doubtful, are doubting themselves when they take... I was seeing a video the other day mm. when a student was looking for a job. He went to an office and then the manager of the office went through Google, through the courses which expired. And he found out that this student, this, the applicant of a job, the course was expired. The, 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 the company said, no, I have another qualification. I don't have only one. He bought out another one. It was also expired. He bought a third one, expired. Now, said, yeah, but you have no job here. Then the manager, that applicant, also had the guards. What about yours, sir? When they Googled for the boss, the boss also found out that his course he had attended six years ago was also expired. So both of them, now eventually the, the manager said, okay, now let me allow you, but don't tell another person. Now you see, it is a question of secrecy, lies and what have you. So we have a lot of problems. Now, as far as what the question you have asked hmm. is, what about our status of a university? Shall we be now be trusted that what we are teaching is correct? And by the way, even the annual admissions that we are made recently, but people are now coming out. Should we leave these admissions to go on when all those which are there are being challenged with expired uh, courses? So we are challenged, and I don't know what should be the way forward. However, I heard the minister, the state minister for higher education, mm. Dr. Muyengo, assuring the nation that the degrees are not expired and they are under review. That's what I heard. <laughs> However, mm. also then if there is review, it must be quickened. <laughs> The process of review should be quickened so that people are assured, mm. the citizens of Uganda are assured that the courses their children are taking are okay and they can be organized internationally and nationally. First of all, we may not mind about the international. Let us mind about recognition at the national level. Yeah. Okay? Mm. Because when you buy something that's fired for your family, you now know it's going to begin with your family. 
kwa affect. Mm. Therefore, our family here is Uganda. The nation should be, uh, should be first to trust us. Before we go to the international level, because now I say, but you, you know, they are not recognized internationally. What about nationally? Mm. Our country should be able to have confidence in the education we are providing as national institutions. I think that's what I can say. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, now, uh, to you, uh, Senior Remedias, as an educational analyst, what do you think might have led to the declaration of these programs as expired? Were stakeholders adequately involved in this decision-making process? Senior Remedias. Thank you very much for that critical question. Um, I would want to thank this thing for the public. Many people are asking, what do you mean by courses expired? We know when, when I buy aspirin and they say it is good until June, uh, 2014. I cannot use it in 2023. It is expired. It is now poison. If I am teaching a course in algebraic functions or cost accounting or organic chemistry, how? what is your definition of expired? You mean the course I took two years ago in organic chemistry, the principles that I was taught are not the same as principles of organic chemistry or cost accounting. What is the definition of expired? Because that word is very confusing to us. Professor Waisuaku, I think could answer that question. Oh. Pro uh, professor, this, uh, back to you. Yes. Now, that's why there is the word review. Mm. That's why we are given uh, five years to review a course. Because we are in a changing world. Change, it changes every day. The information we got yesterday mm. is not the information that we should get today. That's why um, somebody will refer to it as expired. You know, the way we studied, for example, uh, you go in a P1 class, mm. if you go there, P1, just basically P1, what they are studying today, my friend, eh? even a, a, a parent who started 20 years ago and the child brings back the work, homework, for example, uh, to be helped by the parent, the parent will need to hire a teacher to come and do that work at home. Because things have changed. A pure child is, is using a computer. You get? Mm. So, today, like we had the COVID the other day, during that time, we started to say, hey, let us do work. Huh? Instead of going to class, let us do it from home. You get? Yeah. So, if you are going to do ho work at home, online, line learning, eh? Mm. You know, virtual learning. Now, that's different from what we did. You don't need to go to class. You now need to participate. As we are now talking here, there's a class going on somewhere. The lecturer is online with the students. Okay? Yeah. So, okay. things are changing. And things are changing every day. And they are, it is very fast. We must cope up with all the other world. That's why some of these things are referred to as expired, expired information. You get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are saying, by, by the way, there's one time when you're saying, hey, we're going to start about prairies. <laughs> eh, prairies in the USA. Hey. I don't know whether you, you remember in senior four yeah. or senior six. Mm. Yes? Mm. Those things are no longer there, my friend. 
so if you you, you continue to 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 to, to teach praise 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 hmm. i'm just giving an example of that but if an entire institution of learning these things happen so things are changing every time we must also go with the changes and through reviews that's why they say hey now this information is expired we need to review and change it may not be whole change hmm. everything goes at the same time but a few things change and therefore they affect the whole curriculum and the syllabus i okay. think that's why right. we should have reviews and then that's why people say mm -hmm. this is expired but what i was challenging is mm -hmm. that we got the information from uh, the international community that internationally these degrees are, to, uh, are no longer palatable i for me that one i thought it was not correct Hmm. Because how does somebody in USA know that in Uganda this one is no longer applicable? Uh -huh. And then it is expired. <laughs> it starts with us here. And National Council for Higher Learning hmm. should, have the, should have been the one to initiate this, to think, because they are the supervisors. No one from okay. the outside okay. at the international yeah, level have... who came to tell us hmm. that this are expired. It should have been from within us. National yeah. Council for okay. Education. Yes. It should have been the one to All right. make you, an you alarm. Have, hmm. And yet, you have answered my we question. have agreed also that he, the Vice Chancellor of, 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 of Chambogo University, the chairperson there, therefore the courses of Chambogo should have been reviewed. Because the, uh, because he's aware, he sees what is going on. The vice chancellor, therefore, uh, Chambo should not have had the seventy four uh, 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 courses mm. which are expired, categories are expired. That's what okay. I can say. Okay, senior. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Professor Waiswa, for that explanation because it has been misleading. Um, if a student is enrolled at Makerere University School of Business and is majoring in accounting, there is no way that student will not have to take a course in cost accounting. Whether it was taken 10 years ago or 20 years ago, cost accounting is a requirement for anybody studying accounting. Anybody majoring in chemistry has to take a course in organic chemistry. It is not the course that has expired because organic chemistry is going to be the same principles today, yesterday, and tomorrow. That's okay. Now, the problem you are talking about should be more a problem of curriculum development. Yes. You have made a very good reference to the prairies and the South Sea Islanders and all these other things. We don't need to teach those to our children. We can teach those to, you know, we can teach things which are more relevant, given now that we are no longer a colonial territory. Uh, that was done to us when we are during, living under the colonialists. Nevertheless, curriculum is a problem. Who are responsible? for organizing a curriculum for higher education. It is that National Council of Higher Education, which is headed by this Munyarwanda you have mentioned. What is his name? Kat Katunguku, Katunguka, whatever the name is. This is the problem of Uganda. We have these bloody Nikon pumps who have taken over our country. They have taken over everything for their own self-aggrandization and they don't give a damn about the quality of education for our children. I personally have run into so many students who claim to have a bachelor's degree from Makerere. They can't even write one letter of plain English. They cannot. When, when we were going to junior secondary schools a hundred years ago, we could do that very easily. It's a shame that the curriculum has been so screwed up by these in Rwandas in every position of responsibility. They come there just to eat, not to serve, because they don't even know anything. 
Just look at that pumpkin sitting there like, like as a minister of education. I mean, just look at that woman. Do you expect anything out of such a, a pumpkin? Hell no. This is the problem of Uganda. And then I have heard that one of those idiots, and I, I, I'm praising him to call him an idiot, by the way, talking about it costs money. What kind of money? You are sitting there paid a, a salary as a, a professor, as a member of the National Council of Higher Education, and you think it is going to cost money to sit together with your colleagues and design a curriculum? You have to be paid extra money for doing that? And I can't, I can't believe these are human beings. It is the curriculum that you are teaching these kids. It is the staffing of those universities. You are not giving them jobs because they are qualified, but because they belong to your tribe. And they have to come with those names which end up in a, a very sarcastic manner. That's the only reason they are given those jobs. That's why they are becoming vice chancellors, chairman of this, chairman of that. I mean, come on. That's not the way to run a country. And then you come to the admission of students. Long ago, you had to be qualified. You had to go through the selective system. But now, they just bring them in like a herd of cows in a crowd. And after they have, as you said, you may have 40,000 students at Jambogo, they make sure that at least 30,000 are Banyarwandas. And where are the Baganda and Basoga and Batesova? You know, it's incredible. Because they are doing that on high school level, they are doing it on Makerere, on university level. And then our own national Ugandans have no space in those schools. The teachers are totally hopeless. The administration is even worse. The curriculum is so rotten. It hasn't been reviewed for a hundred years and they don't give a damn. What do you expect? That's why the, the quality of education in Uganda is so rotten that you cannot even hire these guys. They come with a degree purporting to be educated and you, you ask that applicant for a position, just a few simple questions, can't even answer them. I met one Indian businessman in Nairobi some years ago. He told me he would not hire anybody in his company who is a graduate of those universities. This was before this revelation came out. And I asked him why. He said, because when he if he hires them, they are going to sit there like watermelons waiting for the orders from the boss. While uni graduates of other universities that have been actually well-educated are so creative, productive, and they're worth paying their salary. And that's the problem. So the bottom line, my friend, Professor Waiswa, curriculum development, yes, but that is springing from the fact that you have rotten bastards sitting there as administrators of the educational system. This is why we need to throw all of them in the Katonga River. Let them float with the papyrus. Professor Waiswa, before we go to break, are you adding something on that? Mm. Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead, Professor. What is the, what's the question? No, uh, I thought you have been, I've been hearing, listening. Yeah, listening to senior majors. Yeah. Mm. From, what, from what I have I have picked from senior majors, mm. Um, he has individualized. Mm. Individualized. His talk was full of individualization. 
Mm. But I, I, I think because uh, uh, the prof professor uh, from the, the vice chancellor of Makere is not the same as prof uh, Professor Katongo of Chamboko. Mm. We have got variously different um, uh, vice chancellors in different universities because very many universities have been affected by this. Okay. Mm. So I would I would not say individualizing uh, of this matter mm. is the problem. I would say because one when somebody like that Indian in Nairobi could not employ a Ugandan graduate mm. because of substandard. You know, we must distinguish now between substandard a graduate who is substandard was qualified but there are those who are good who are being employed there are those who are good who are being employed because we have got many of our graduates getting first class degrees all right yeah. and yet there are those who are really like he has referred to some of them who can't go such a sentence and the and the problem is far reaching the type of entrant at the university from senior six also calls for review which student is 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 entered at the university and when he enters there what about the one who is teaching the teacher the yeah. lecturer the lecturer mm. You know, so all of these things are in a cycle. Then after lecturer, we have got a student, but then also we have got a curriculum. And now that is uh, like you are cooking food. It doesn't have maybe on three pillars, a masiga. Eh? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it must <laughs> live alone this one where we cook on, uh, 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 when we have got it, uh, the gas, mm. it is one round, isn't it? So you put gas, there is something wrong, you just put on, isn't it? Yeah. Ne? They, are, they should be three. But if one of them is faulty, therefore you are going to produce faulty food. The food will not cook. I am referring this one to university, like my university now. We have a student who enters maybe he somehow he, he, he passed in year six. I don't know how he goes into the system of a university where the, where maybe lecturers at whom it may concern, you know, to whom it may concern. A lecturer may be to whom it may what concern. When you are going to university at our time, mm. the, 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 the lecturer knew each individual. He can call you waste. I don't want that one. But today a lecturer who is teaching 300 students, 300 in one single lecture, mm. in, in one hour. How can that lecturer really be effective? Okay? Mm. And then what is going to teach? What is this lecturer going to teach? We have talked about principles in chemistry, principles in economics, to have remained as they were but the methods have been changing. Are you getting me? Yeah. The methods of the river have been what? Changing. Have changed. Mm. Therefore, you go with these changes, even if the principles are remaining the same, but the river is changing. Are we changing with that? So eventually, if one of those things remain behind, mm. then we shall be termed as expired, unfortunately. But I wanted to say from mm. senior that let us not individualize this. Mm. Let us look at the matter as in holistic, not individualize that so and so so and so. so. Then I, I think we shall we shall miss the point if we went on individualizing. Mm. That's what I could I can say for now, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Katiwano Wenjagala to gain the reco Muruganda. Uh, Sini, mm. wabado inako gataka, wangastu na ingira yes. Uganda? Well, 
Tinina Chenjagara Ugamba, what the professor says it makes good sense, and I appreciate his position because I can understand exactly where he's coming from. Now, it is the individuals that make the sum. You cannot run away from the reality, the mathematical reality, that it is the individual units which make the sum. Now, teaching 300 students in a lecture is not new in, in universities. Uh, there is a university about 20 minutes away from me here. It's called the University of